Giro d'Italia stage four was the first proper mountaintop finish. And it's time to go look at some power numbers of both the breakaway and the GC contenders to see what the level of the Giro d'Italia is this year. I already know it's high. Uh, Campanet said that yesterday he said it was really hard. So I assumed it was high, but wow. It's pretty, pretty, pretty hard to get a result these days. Uh, so John, Joe Dambrowski won. We've got his numbers from the break. Unreal. Um, some decent gaps here like Vlasov. Uh, well, basically from Bernal to Carthy, they all got the same time. Remco a little bit further back. And then there were some absolute shockers like Vincenzo Nibli, Hinley, and then Almeida's like miles down. Same with George Bennett. So anyway, we'll get over to John Dambrowski's power file. So straight up 194k, 5 hours 20. Big day in the saddle. 5,000 kilojoules, that's the magic number. That When you do 5,000 kilojoules in a day, that's huge. Um, average speed 37k an hour, nothing too crazy. Um, but we'll, we'll just go through or we'll just go through the race. So first part here, neutralized, 137 watts. Anyone gets around. Um, the first part here, there was a lot of attacks. Um, Campanuts was basically off the front with uh, Quinton Hermans, I believe it was. So it was pretty hard here, 330 normalized for 24 minutes, but it's, it's not too crazy. But you can see here, his heart rate spike is massive here. And I believe this is when he was um, in the break and they were trying to get their huge advantage. So they really, um, you know, 17 minutes at 340 watts, um, heart rate sustained 160, 170. Um, and the key thing with the heart rate um, on World Tour Pros is that theirs is really low. So like if they get to like 180, like that's probably their max just because they're so like fatigued the whole time. So their heart rate doesn't really get up too high. Um, like you look today, max was 167. I'm pretty sure that was in this part here. So you could say the hardest part of the stage. Anyway, after that, heart rate goes down a lot before the final climb. Normalized 245, heart rate 120, real easy. Just, you know, soft tapping zone two. Um, they got six minute gap quite quickly, so didn't need to go too hard. First climb of the day, I've uh, ridden at about five watts per kilo. So for these guys, 140 heart rate, like tempo. Um, it's not, not too hard, five watts per kilo for them. Uh, we look at this sort of part here, it's decently hard, 325 normalized, again, not, not crazy. This climb here, they started to go quite hard actually. Um, six watts per kilo-ish, well, 5.8 for 10 minutes. And this is when uh, Quinton Hermans, and Yul Jensen and Ren Tamarame all attacked just over the top and went on the downhill. And so then they had a massive run in into the, uh, the, they had a decent gap, like a minute and a half. This climb was when they were trying to peg them back. And again, starts to be a little bit harder, like 5.3-ish. Towards the end, they really, really surged it. If we look at this just part here, 6.3 for the last seven minutes, 40. You know, that's that's pretty tough. That's coming, what, three hours, four hours in, four, three and a half thousand kilojoules. Like that's when it's really starting to tell. Over the top bit here, again, starts to definitely ramp up. It's, it's getting harder, um, but it's still not getting crazy. Um, here, again, on this, this climb here, the Monte Creto di Stratara. Sorry, my Italian has gone a little bit rusty uh, since we used to speak it a little bit. Uh, but anyway, yeah, 5.3 here. Again, pretty hard, but not crazy. But there was still a decent amount of people in the, in the final climb. Like People were getting bin, but still a decent amount left. Um, and then this was really where he just launched it. Now. Going into the climb, did 560 watts for the first 30 seconds, and I'm pretty sure that's just where he distanced, uh, what's his face, the um, Demarkey. Uh, and then the rest of it was again like six watts per kilo, but I think it's more, I think it could be like 6.2. But the thing you have to think about this is okay, like six, six to 6.2 for 15 minutes is good, but like after 5,000 kilojoules, 4,900 kilojoules, that is outrageous. And also, it's not like it's 4,900 kilojoules of like nice, you know, going up a mountain, going down a mountain. It's like grim roads, wet, cold. Like, look at the average temperature. Like, okay, that's not that cold. 15 degrees is actually quite toasty um, if you're from the UK. But still, like, it's not nice. Uh, and really, that like this last climb was just obviously where he dispatched everyone else in the in the breakaway. Uh, Demarkey um, and all the rest of them all got binned. But to be fair, Demarkey's in the yellow, in the pink jersey tomorrow, so it's all good. But you can see here, Caden 79, heart rate 158. Like, it doesn't go as high. I guess he's just quite tired. Um, but yeah, this bit here, and then over the top, it was sort of a downhill into the finish, and he was all good to go. So it was a pretty remarkable power file. And it was interesting. I heard a podcast ages ago about uh, about Jonathan Volters, who obviously was his ex-team boss, and said this is the stage they wanted to win. But the issue they were saying, so what they do is they try and get him to train just like upper zone two, um, just the whole time to sort of get used to these efforts. So you could probably go out five hours at like 300, 320 watts. Uh, but they were saying like that sort of nullified his punch and he couldn't get into the break. <clears throat> so I assume at UAE they figured out how to get him some punch and also getting good at these sort of sustained efforts, just riding five to 5.3 on all the climbs and then whacking six on the last one, because that's what you need in the break. Um, 
But anyway, we'll go over to, well, actually, we'll, we'll have a look at the climb. So this is the climb itself, the last climb, 4.3 kilometers, around 10%. Uh, Betty all did a really good time. I was pretty surprised by this. Actually, I thought he might have nicked Hugh Carthy's bike computer or Hugh Carthy nicked his or something, but no, no, no. Betty all looks good. Same with Formula. Uh, they all finished at the same time. So we're going to go have a look at um, Caruso and Bookman's power files just because there's some there's, there's discrepancies here. Ruben Guerra as well. So if we look at Bookman's, it says six watts per kilo, but I think he's got one of those Shimano right hand power meters. So I feel like they just are random number generators more or less. But if we look at um, an actual decent power, I think. They're on SRM, so it's always good. Um, Caruso, so again, Caruso, pretty, like, not much easier in the in the peloton, 4,400 kilojoules. Normalizes a little bit less, um, and they weigh similar-ish. Actually, Dombrowski might weigh a little bit less. Let's have a look, let's have a look. Dombrowski, oh yeah, Dombrowski weighs quite a lot less. So yeah, it was <clears throat> a fair amount easier, actually, in the peloton. Uh, but the last climb, he did 6.4 watts per kilo for 14 minutes, and if we look at Pro Cycling stats, and you can see that he finished what 20 seconds down oh uh, no sorry he finished here which yeah was about 20 seconds down on the fast boy 30 seconds down so all i can say is this let's say it's 6.2 some if we plot it halfway in between that is that is some pretty good numbers it could be six point could be more than that so i'd say if they're doing 6.2 30 seconds well we're gonna say at 6.4 probably that's ish what they're doing for the last 14 minutes i think caruso's might be a little bit high and also the other thing is he probably rode in the wind as well. So if you're a GC guy like Bookman when you're sitting in a little bit and you might say it was sitting in 18k an hour, trust me, you get drafted at 18k an hour. Um, it's a little, but it does help. Um, it was a tailwind today, so so maybe it wasn't crazy. But even so, if he's doing like, you know, I reckon they're doing six and a half burn out on those lot um, for this sort of effort, which is pretty crazy, uh, but sort of to what we would expected if when they're like some of the best Grand Tour contenders in recent history. So anyway, those are the thoughts and those are just the comments of today. Pretty solid stage, uh, pretty hard stage, looked grim, very happy. <laughs> that wasn't me <laughs> um, in five hours of pissing down rain. But yeah, pretty solid results from all around and very, very strong from Joe Dombrowski. Congrats to the big boy. Give him some kudos. Definitely needs that. Um, but yeah, 308 normalized, five hours 20. Close to five watts per kilo for uh, five and a half hours normalized. That's pretty huge. Anyway, cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.